will shine the light for all to see. Christ led you be university. For me. It's our first official visit to Christland University, so thank you for the warm welcome. And Vice Chancellor, we're, we're very honored that you're welcoming us here. You know, I read your bio before coming. Very, very impressive. We got to hear it for a second time, so we're very, very impressed. Um, so actually, we, we are on a two-city tour. We started in Ibadan, and we were there for two days, and now we're in Abiy Kuta for two days. We're actually launching a project called um, Project Fact Check Nigeria, which is uh, training radio journalists on how to identify and counter misinformation and disinformation. So that was the main purpose of our trip, but we always like to engage with um, academia and new university partners while we are out traveling. And um, the goal of today is really to get to know you, to get to know your team, to interact with your students and staff, and look for areas for partnership moving forward. Um, like Clemson mentioned, we're responsible for promoting educational opportunities for students, for scholars, uh, also for faculty. And so we have many programs, uh, such as the Fulbright program, that are available for doctoral research, uh, for different types of research in the United States. Um, later today, I, think, I hope some of you can join, we'll have an interactive session with some of the students um, to give them a sense of what the U.S. mission in Nigeria is doing, um, some of our foreign policy, and how we work together with our counterparts in Nigeria on shared goals. Um, maybe I'll just turn it over to Sam to say a, a word on what he's going to be doing separately from me after this. Okay, we're having another session on e-library USA. Uh, we're also considering the best approach to do online research. Uh, we're doing this particularly because um, it's always assumed that people know how to do online research, but there are ways to do the best way to do so, especially for students. So we'll be showing them, and then we'll also have, within this COVID time, access to our databases. We have online databases on our e-library in USA. So we're going to be also giving you a link where you can register and get immediately all the access to those databases. As, as Clemson mentioned, um, Samuel, he runs our American spaces, which are basically spaces that are open to the public and they're free. We have, as you said, 13 in southern Nigeria. We have one in Abiyokuta. It's at the OOPL in the Youth Center. So we, were, we just came from there. It um, had books, it had online resources, laptops, Wi-Fi, as well as so many programs that are free and open to the public. You can find them on the Facebook page. Uh, students, anyone can register to be a member there, and then all the information comes to their email. So it's a very nice resource, and it's new. We just opened it last year. So the last thing I'd like to mention is in May, we're having a conference. It will be hybrid. As we made 10 to 11. Of course, we'll send you all the details. You don't have to worry about writing them. But it's called Opening New Frontiers, Mobilizing Stakeholders to Build Long-Term Partnership Between U.S. and Nigeria Institutions on Higher Education. But really what that means is we're trying to connect universities in the United States with Nigerian universities with the goal of creating online joint degree programs. So maybe even the Nigerian students don't have to ever travel to the U.S. They could do their all of their learning here in Nigeria, reducing costs, but also having a joint degree program. So of course, we'll send you all of the details. We'll invite you to join virtually. And so we hope that many of you will be able to do so. So just to close, we really look forward to, to getting to know you better, to meeting your students, and to further deepening our relationship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very uh, close to close. You said it. I can tell you, it cannot just close like that without a response for the vice chancellor. Thank the vice chancellor. You. Thank you very much, um, Jenny. For me, to call you Jenny, <laughs> Jennifer, and the team from the U.S. Consulate. Uh, I must tell you that we're highly honored and delighted, and um, on behalf of. Um, our chancellor, our founder. Um, we, we don't know how to describe her. <laughs> High Chief Dr. Mrs. Winifred Awoshika. Um, people would have loved to be here. And all members of 
Tristan fan movie all that stuff. Including the board of trustees, the governing council, staff and students. Uh, we welcome you.
because one embassy is not enough. So the embassy in Abuja covers the 19 states in the north, and the U.S. consulate in Lagos covers the 17 states of the south. So there's so many issues that we can work on with our Nigerian counterparts, but we've settled on three major goals that we have in this country. The first will to be made carefully, and then we will, I'll ask later who can remember the three goals of the U.S. mission in Nigeria. So the first is support stronger democratic institutions, governance, and respect for human rights. So that's number one, supporting stronger democratic institutions, governance, and respect for human rights. The second is increase benefit, mutually beneficial trade and investment, and strengthen human capital for Nigerian economic growth. So let me repeat number two. It's increasing trade and investment between our countries and strengthening human capital for economic growth. And then the third is furthering Nigerian unity, peace, and stability. So the third is furthering Nigerian unity, peace, and stability. So try to remember those three main goals and at, towards the end I'll ask again who remembers them and then bring the prizes again. It's a, a great pleasure to have you at uh, our university. I remember when I was a very young lecturer and a young lady like yourself used to come around to University of Lagos to try to speak to my students, wanting the audience to explain what is happening, uh, US foreign policy. So my question is based on what is the role of the U.S. foreign policy in anti-corruption efforts because it's a way it's affecting the educational aspect of the the 17 southern states of Nigeria and so we do as best as we can to get out of Lagos and travel around for different reasons, different events, different meetings and uh, like I mentioned in my remarks we are responsible for promoting educational opportunities and engaging with students and universities and academics and so that's why we're here today. This is our first official visit to Chrisland University and the goal is to meet the leadership, the faculty, the staff, the students, engage with them and then look at ways you know moving forward we can deepen our partnership. So today we had one of my team members was had a session in the library and they were explaining how to do online research to students and also the eLibrary USA. And what that is, is it's a database of different publications, scholarly articles, journals, and we're, we're giving access to the students here for free, and they can do it from home. So that was one of the things, that's one of the ways we're deepening our partnership. Of course, we would really love, love to see applications coming from Chrisland University students for our many different educational, cultural, and professional exchange programs. Thank you. I feel a fulfillment. I feel an achievement. And um, I also feel that we in Queensland have been favored by God and by man. But having these visits go on successfully, to me, is a great achievement by Queensland University stakeholders. Our vision is for Queensland University to be a world-class institution. So these visits has made it easier for us to achieve that vision. The visit has opened up so many opportunities we were not aware of. People right here in Abiyakota, they have an office in OOPL, the Yolusha Gwa Passenger Presidential Library Complex, where we can um, go to and use the resources there. 
and also have access to free training. It has opened up opportunity for exchange programs. Our students can apply every November for exchange programs that will take them to the U.S. for five to six weeks. And they will learn American system, American culture. It has opened up opportunities for people who want to be trained in several areas. Free training opportunities. It has even opened up opportunities for people who are graduates to get uh, employed. They can, there are sites they can go to on their own and they get employed. And those that want to do businesses, there are exchange programs where they can travel to the US and meet with successful businessmen. So many. In addition, the visit has uh, opened up a uh, library resource for us. They've given us license to use the US, the um, e library US. And there was a training on it today. So many of our students and staff logged into that program. It was very exciting. And so they've given us the world that can, I can see. So if you want to carry out research, if you want journals, if you want anything, books, information on any topic, we can now get it in the comfort of our university, in the comfort of our rooms. You know, so we're already there. We're already in, our, in America. <laughs> and if you're in America, then you have become a global... Um, yeah, you yeah, have started playing in the global space. You yeah, are yeah, becoming a world-class institution. So we appeal to the government to focus on private universities as well. They can revisit the laws that empower state fund to fund public universities. After all, like I always say, the Students in private universities are Nigerians. A lot of the, the, the teachers, the workers, they are Nigerians. So we appeal to them to revisit the decision. Uh, private universities are, are not set up for profit. I'm telling you, but we pay all the taxes. Part of the taxes private institutions pay go to debt fund. We pay a lot of taxes that public universities don't pay. So. And the owners spend a lot of money. Do you understand? So they should support in infrastructure, in scholarship, in training, capacity building, in different ways, in research. How are you going to rate the professor from private and the professor from if you do not sponsor research? But one thing I'm doing is, well, I have, I have a TED fund grant under my primary university and what I did was just to add, collaborate with Christland on that TED fund grant. So that's one, one area that TED fund has approved. Um, private universities can collaborate with public universities with respect to grants. To me that's good but that's not enough. Far, it's a far cry for what we're looking for. Because I know there's a lot of pressure and by the grace of God one day we will get something from the government, including waivers, even ordinary waivers from taxes, they're good. And then infrastructure, which costs a lot of money to put up the law, the law, the College of Law. <laughs> so.